Hello, guys. How are y'all doing? It's nine o'clock. I know, I like, I absolutely look like I'm about to go on some Janet Jackson commercial or like, I feel like I'm about to start singing Beat It or something. <laughs> or what was that other song she did? I don't remember. But anyway, I'm not taking my hat off. I just came in from the movies. And, um, and so anyway, I was like rushing to the house. Cause I was like, oh, I have a live at nine o'clock. Let me get my little stuff together. So um, please share my live. And um, yeah, so I give you guys time to hop on. Hey, please share my live. So anyhow, I'm definitely going to just stay looking like this tonight. Hello, Mr. Baylor. How you doing? I'm coming in for the discussion. <laughs> so we're just, um, I'm just getting logged on. I'm finishing getting my little self together. So hope everybody's had a happy, I think it's Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. My days are thrown off whenever I'm like off on Mondays or whatever. Like my days get completely thrown off. Hey guys, come on in. Get your lives together. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I um um just uh enjoying life, um working on projects, collaborations. So I'm doing great, Mr. Baylor. Thank you for asking. I'm doing great. Ready to talk about this topic, I think. I hope. I feel like I am. I feel like I'm ready to. Um, so anyway, I should be easy being I'm an alpha female. I should I should have no problem. Hey B, hey Bianca. I'm sharing my life. So y'all please definitely share it. I'm sure someone's gonna be taken out by it. Because people are always taken out by majority of things that I say. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, girl, y'all see I got this hat on. Like, I'm definitely out here looking like, um, like I'm about to be on somebody Janet Jackson commercial or something. Or is it Beat It? I feel like the song is, I feel like, I feel like something with Janet. Because with this leather hat, it's something with the black. It's just something that I'm feeling tonight. But I went to the movies. I went and saw the photograph. It was so good. And so, um, so anyway, it's raining here in Shreveport. And um, I just threw a hat on, some leggings, and a top, and rode out. Just That's just how I am. So I'm not always glitz and glam. Sometimes I just be out here rolling out on a whim. So it was. It was so, so good. I really enjoyed it. So tonight we're going to be talking about one of my, one of the topics that I get often. Hey guys, share my live. Come on in the, come on in the room, child. Uh, one of the topics that, um, hey Jacinta, one of the topics that I kind of get is about like being a strong black woman and not just a strong black woman, but just a strong woman really, period. Um, and just kind of how I manage that. And, um, so before we, so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, the alpha female, the force and the movement. Um, and that title really just like came off a whim today. And I was like, Jocelyn, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about that. And, um, and so, um, anyway, uh, intimacy is out. Um, we had some glitches with Amazon. And so uh, we had to go back and um, reset some things. So the e-read is out and back available. The live uh, physical, I mean, the hard copy book should be back available probably tomorrow. So I'll definitely make a post about it. But if you still, if you want to order intimacy off of the app or my website, bridgerpurpose.com, you definitely can. But I will be able to ship it out to you, but I'll ship it personally signed by me. So if you want to order, uh, order, um, 
Purposeful Pain or Intimacy off of the app, uh, The Purpose. It's right under your shop. If you click shop at the bottom of your app, uh, that is the website. It takes you straight to it. You can order your books there. Every book that you order from there, I will personally ship to you and it will come signed. So yes, got that out the way. So thank you guys so much for coming out last night and supporting me the way you did. Uh, some of you sh um, were able to stream it see it via uh, my Facebook Live uh, postings and pages. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my reading. I was, at first I was really nervous about it, but then when I got, um, when I got up there, like all my nerves disappeared. I felt like I was right at home. And, um, and so I really, really enjoyed my night at Words of a Latte and being able to share an excerpt of intimacy and really just uh, indulge the people. So definitely, definitely was excited about that. So thank you so much for all of you that shared the post, that posted about it, that came out. I took tons of pictures. Um, so I'll be having more pictures to share from the intimacy night. So y'all know every other Tuesday night, you know, we have these lives, darling, these conversations. And so I really wanted to um, really talk about from the uh, intimate standpoint, uh, loving an alpha female and cause you know, alpha female, the conversation around alpha females have been like a, a big hot, hot, hot topic for people. And they want to talk about alpha female and you know, what's wrong with a strong woman? Why we act like we don't need a man? Uh, why it appears that we not trying to Hey Jocelyn, my, my marketer is on here. If you need a marketer, Jocelyn McElvain, hit her DM. Joy's marketing. But, um, you know, people are always talking about the alpha female. And, you know, for a while, I even, I've always been extremely strong, strong personality. Always. All my life. I'm going to do it my way. Like, that has always been my personality. And so, if you've read Purposeful Pain, or if you have not, I'm just going to give you a little spoiler alert. I do talk about that. Um, in purposeful pain. Hi, Tanisha. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Share my life. Uh, I did talk about that in purposeful pain, and I talk about how, um, you know, for me, I thought that me being this strong woman meant that I couldn't allow the man in my life to be a strong man. And so, one of the constant battles, um, from that relationship was the argument was, you know, I want to be the man, you know, and I was like, okay, well, I mean, God gave you all the parts to be one, just be one. You know, I didn't, I don't understand that. Right. I work just as hard as you. I'm going to have just as I'm competitive. So I'm going to have just as many degrees as you do, whatever you doing, I'm doing like, I, I felt like this should be a team. Hey, Kendra. And so but what I really realized as I went through the healing process and really started to understand who Lauren was and who I was designed and purpose to be, I realized that sometimes the reason the, the term alpha female gets a bad rap as being a woman that is controlling or a woman that you can't tell anything to or a woman who, you know, she got her own. She don't want nobody else. She don't want no help, all this kind of stuff. A lot of that is rooted in the fact that some women are truly not alpha females at all. But what they do, what has happened is they have been hurt. They are carrying past pain. And so a lot of times they they call it, oh, I'm just an alpha female. I'm just a strong woman. And that's why, you know, I don't listen to anybody else. When the truth is you're really, we're, we're really just a damaged woman that's been hurt, that desires to trust again. But because of whatever situation that may have taken place uh, prior to in our relationships, um, what have you, it made us hard and it made us not you know, just not want to trust again. And so we wall up and we call it alpha female because it sounds better than saying broken female. You know, <laughs> like, is it doesn't, you know, broken female, alpha female, it doesn't sound, you know, as sensual, you know, um, or as attractive. But the truth is, 
Yes, Miss Hoya, call it what it is. The truth is, no, you're a broken female. And I can remember a season when I was a broken female. And so because I was that, I felt like me doing things my way, me saying what I want to say, me doing what I want to do, you know, that neck roll, you know, we, especially black when we got that neck roll down, a hand, you know, that that was okay. And as I really healed and really was able to define myself as a alpha female, a very proud pride one, as I began to even research alpha female and a strong woman is a very attractive woman. And so the term alpha female is not there. There's not, it's when you, when you really get to researching it, it's actually not a bad thing at all. And when I really kind of started to think about it, I was like, why is it that nobody's talking about the beta female? Like we don't never, like you ever hear a conversation, somebody talking about the beta female, like nobody ever talks about them. Right. And, um, unless we're describing a woman that, you know, we feel like it just isn't strong. Uh, but I do think that we kind of go back and forth in between the two. And so as I begin to really accept my, um, my, my status as alpha female, these are come a couple of things that I realized in the signs that I wanted to be able to give our kings and our queens, um, and women that are, are just really trying to figure out, okay, which one am I? You know, am I a true alpha female or am I a broken woman hiding behind the term alpha female? Because it sounds good. Because I don't want to say that you hurt me. And I will say this for the kings that are going to hear this or that are probably on my live right now and queens. The number one desire of an alpha female is to submit to a man that she trusts. The, the issue that we have of why you see that there's a struggle, especially when it comes to black women with um, submission is because a lot of us have dealt with being in a relationship or being with a man that we could not trust. And so what do you do with somebody that you cannot trust? You don't trust them. <laughs> like you, you are typically combative. You typically don't follow what they have to say. And you probably don't respect it that often because you don't trust them. So men, if you find yourself battling for your manhood or your, you know, man card or however you want to call it, your, your kingdom, a lot of it has to do with the way that a woman views you and the way we truly do trust you. You know, I always tell you guys, a pair of lips will tell you anything. My girlfriend, Farron, always says that I sold the same from her and I always repeat it. And it's very true. A pair of lips will tell you anything. And one thing about a woman is women like how men live in their live in their minds and rest in their hearts, as my good friend uh, T.C. Hughes says. Women have the ability to really just, um, sometimes we just live in our minds only. <laughs> like we won't tell you what we're not going to do. We just don't do it. And that's just what we do. And so then you're like, baby, why you, I thought you trusted me. Not really. I didn't. That's why I just didn't do it. And so that's the truth. Sometimes we just don't do stuff because we don't trust you. And it's, you know, we don't feel like arguing about why we don't trust you. We don't feel like explaining why we won't trust you. And so we just don't. And so you find yourself fighting in the relationship for a mantle that should easily be yours, but we won't submit because the truth is we're afraid to, you know, we're afraid to. And a lot of times it's based on uh, what most men do not realize is that it's based on probably the way we've watched you view and deal with things on your own. So one thing about women, we're extremely observant extremely observant and so we watch what y'all do like we watch like we look we watch like if you're irrational with your decisions or with your finances or with your family or you just make irrational decisions on your job like we're not we're not submitting to that. Like we are absolutely not submitting to that. We're go like, we're going to have an issue because we're like, oh wait, that's how you do your stuff. So if you, if that's how you act in your own situation, then what are you going to do with me? You know? And so a lot of times you'll find us questioning a lot. You know, we ask a lot of questions because 
honestly, half of us don't think you thought it through. So, you know, so that that a lot of times can be the, the tug and the pull. And another big issue that I tend to have found in my own past relationships and then just talking to women and men alike is that uh, alpha woman has to be managed not tamed. We're not animals. We're not, this is not the zoo. We're not property. Um, so you're going to have to be into me. See, if you want me to be an actively engaged employee, <laughs> this is a nice way of saying that. So if you don't understand what makes me go hard for you like what are my core values what are those things that uh really makes me uh, get up and go and you're trying to to work work at me work me at a, a micromanager type state an alpha female is not about to work with it like we're just not we probably gonna tag and that could be your character that could be the our mouths that could be anything so for alpha female, we want to know that you're there for more than just what you can get because we have a lot to give. We have a lot to give. We have a lot that we desire to give, but we're not going to give it to just random Joe Blow who said that he wanted it because one of the biggest fears of an alpha female is to give of herself vulnerably to a man that does not have the capacity to hold what she carries. Now you out here wasting my oil on the floor and I'm slipping and falling. And then you asking me for more and I'm trying to figure out, well, what was the last 10 things that I did for you? And... I'm not even realizing the glass that I'm pouring in is cracked because a cracked glass can't hold water or oil or any or any substance whatsoever. At some point, it'll continue to, to fall out and phase out and be unable to hold anything. Well, for an alpha female but who, who likes to like know things, that's not going to work. <laughs> we have to know that we can rest our hat on you and that we can rest our bags on you. And so I don't know if you guys saw, I shared, a, I did a live about two weeks ago on my personal page and it, and it, in the live was around, can he carry your bags? And for alpha female, that is like so important for us is that we know that you can carry our bags, whether that is emotional baggage, whether that is our trauma, whether that is our healing process, just as a man wants to be able to be safe with a woman, an alpha female wants to be safe with you just as equal. And so some of the things that I wrote down as tips, and I'm sure Jocelyn's going to be sharing this out as tips um, for if, as far as intimacy is that a true alpha a true alpha woman can keep her standards raised without diminishing a man's character. That's really important for my kings. So if you're dealing with a woman who's like, I'm an alpha female, but she really acts um, like she broken, she probably just broken. Because a true alpha female doesn't have to, we don't have to diminish who you are to raise up who we are. Like we just, you just rise with us. Like it's just, it's just one movement. Um, a true alpha woman will know and articulate her purpose. So if you are with a, a, um, a person and you're dating and you're, and you know, they come across as a very strong person, typically people that are very strong in their personalities are also strong in their faith and their core values and their purpose. And they know it. They can articulate it. They can tell you, this is what my purpose is. If a person doesn't even know what their purpose is, they're probably still in a process of pruning and a process of figuring out who they are and in a process of becoming who they are. Because even once you know who you are, you still have to evolve and becoming. And that's just a whole different process. That's like germination, right? You got to be planted, die, come back again. I mean, it's a whole thing. And so a lot of times you want to know when you're out dating these so-called alpha males and females, do you even know your purpose? Because if you don't know your purpose, then how are you interviewing for a job? We don't even know what the requirements are. Like, what we doing? Sir, I have an MBA. I'm not, I can't flip fries. I mean, I can't. I'm not, that's not my... That's not my ministry. I'm probably not that good. I don't have restaurant experience, right? So I'm probably not the person that you want making the schedule because I don't know what I'm doing. You know, like you got to know 
Okay, what's the mission? What's the core values here to know if they really properly align with you? Uh, another thing is that, uh, and I said this earlier and I'll repeat it, a true alpha woman will not submit to a man who does not submit to God first. Let me repeat that. A true alpha female will not submit to a man that does not submit to God first. Meaning, did you pray about it? You know, that's, that's one of the things like for me, I'm, that's very, very huge for me. And that, and that goes for if I'm in a romantic relationship or even if it's just a, a friendship or even it's a partnership, like a business partnership, right? If we're collaborating and we're working on something and we're, and we're fasting about it, you know, like my first question is going to be like, well, did, did you pray about it? What did God, what did God say? Because my life is not my own. Okay. Like I don't just aimlessly live my life anymore. There was a season that I did, but I'm not in that season anymore. And she's dead now. She's not coming back. So if you want me to submit to you, I'm going to need to know that you submitted to God first, because if not, see, we're going to have an issue <laughs> because that that's, I need to know that you went back to your core values, to your default setting, which your default setting should be your intimate relationship with God first. I shared a, a quote earlier today with a good friend and, and the quote said that uh, a lo love hits different when a man is intimate with God first. A love from a man hits different when he's intimate with God first. That is so, so, so true. You know, and so for those of us who are believers in the body of Christ, that's really important. Like, what's your, you know, what's your relationship with God like? Because some of us get caught up in, well, does he go to church? Like, I love my mama, but that's going to be her number one kind of, like her number one question going to be, does he know the Lord? Does he go to church? And, you know, as we kind of evolve with this whole technology age and stage, I am old fashioned in that I do want my purpose made to attend church for several reasons. Um, a, I have two boys that are six and seven. So it's very important to me that I'm instilling in them uh, a role model and a routine of taking them to church. I, I want that to be something that they remember. Um, but I also know and understand this. Everybody that's in church, some of us just at church. We're not we just doing church. We not, there's no, there's no church at our home. Right. So, you know, if that, if church should start, like if the whole, that whole movement and spirituality should start at home, you know, your home should feel like church. <laughs> it should have some type of evidence that God come over for at least dinner once a week or something. Right. And so sometimes we get so caught up in that, like, well, does he go to church? Yeah, girl, but he's still a thought. I mean, like, you know, he still don't know his purpose. He's just kind of go. He may be in there looking to pray on other women. So is he really going to grow himself so that he is the man that God has called him to be that so he can be that great and faithful husband? Or is he or she going to church because they checking it off the list? I don't I don't want you to go to be checking stuff off the list. I want to know when you go, what, what kind of encounter do you have? Like. So I feel like for us with, with intimacy, it's intimacy is the ability to dig deeper. You know, some of us think that intimacy is sex. Um, intimacy is not sex and it's not sex only, uh, because sex is actually a form of worship. Um, intimacy is being able to ask the deep questions that, that merge transparency and vulnerability into one and marry the two because transparency can tell you clearly how someone sees things but vulnerability tells you how they feel about what they saw so you can say lauren is wearing purple lipstick i can see her wearing a purple lipstick but how do you feel about me wearing purple lipstick when it's almost the spring season you may feel like that's an issue. I mean, I don't know, right? But at the end of the day, that really tells you the impact that transparency has on a person is when they can give you that vulnerability. And so that's what intimacy is. And for alpha female, it's so important. Like we want to know that you're here for a long time, <laughs> that you're here, you're here for the long haul. Um, 
And so a, a, a true alpha woman is not selfish. A true alpha woman is not a selfish woman. So if you are a workaholic and she says, I'm just a workaholic and that's just, and that's why I'm an alpha female. No, because the alpha female has balance. Yes, I work a lot all, in all my jobs. I'm a mortgage officer 24-7. I am an author 24-7. I am a brand 24-7. However, I know how to balance being a mother. I know how to balance having a social life. And I also know how to balance self-care. And I have the same 24 hours in a day that you have. So... You know, sometimes, you know, my mama always says that people, hey, Renata, people do what they want to do. People make time for what they want to make time for. That's very true. So if someone is trying to hide behind their work as a means to say that's why they're not doing something or why they can't give a certain level of attention to a relationship. No, the truth is, it's just not that important to them, because if it's a priority to them, they will do exactly what it takes for you to know that you are a priority. So that is not a characteristic of an alpha female. She's not selfish. She is selfless and able to balance that. She's a force and a movement. And you cannot be a force and a movement without understanding the true dance of, hey, Evelyn, the true dance of intimacy. Um, a true alpha woman requires intimacy and has self discipline so a person that has no boundaries knows no bounds lets you do what you want to do is not a person that wants to be with you <laughs> drops mic so you know as an alpha woman you you gotta have some boundaries about yourself I can remember a season, especially if you read Purposeful Pain, I talk about that. That was my name to pain was lack of boundaries. And the word no was not, I was not using it enough to bless my spirit. And I would say yes to what I was good at and not be able to say no to what I was great at. So when I became, uh, when I became a person that decided that, you know what, I'm going to begin to heal I had to put boundaries up because, you know, the enemy wants you to be free flowing, you know, all this, you know, we just free flowing, you know, people who can't define their relationship, people who can't define what they really got going on. They just free flowing. Those are people that are indecisive and probably sent to ruin your life. Because an alpha, an alpha male or female knows where they're going, why they're going, who's around them. They're strategic about who's around them. They're methodical about what is what is taking place in them, with them, and through them at all times. So that's not the that's not a sign of an alpha trait when you are a person that lacks boundaries. And people, you know, you have people that will test your boundaries because the enemy is always going to test what you're trying to say and make it appear as if you're not being who God has genuinely called you to be, which is not true. And so for me, I have boundaries now. There's certain things I'm just not going to do. There's certain people that I'm like that, their character, I just, I can't have you in my intimate circle. You know, I just have to know how to properly place everybody and everybody is not bad and everybody is not sent to tear me down. Some people just need to be properly positioned for productivity. This is all about managing, managing relationships, managing friendships, managing businesses, managing a, a romantic relationship. And so it's important that if you are going to acclaim yourself to be this this man that loves strong women, that you also understand the power of emotional intelligence and the ability to effectively manage and have true leadership. Leadership is not you trying to tame me and make me be someone that I'm not. When a person is asking you to be someone that you cannot remain, that means they don't want you. They want the last person that they left. And since that person could not be tamed and put in a cage, you, my dear, are the lucky candidate for taming. I can't be tamed. So, see, that's not going to work. <laughs> I'm not easy. I'm not easily caught and I'm not easily caught up. So, 
you're not going to be able to just easily tame me. And that's that's just true definition of alpha female all the way around. Is th that's just how we are. Um, and th those are all real facts. Being a strong woman does not make you a bad woman. Being a strong woman to my queens that are listening, I'm speaking to you. You being a strong woman does not make you a bad woman. Okay. Yes, I am about to step on some toes and that's exactly what I came to do uh, is to help people because they don't understand. You know, we're out here, we, you know, words have power. And a lot of times we like to like throw around words, flip around words. And we ain't even thought about half of the stuff that we just said. You done said some foolishness and don't even realize it. And sometimes people will just amen you because it sounds good, but it was really stupid. See, I'm I'm a person that believes that words have power. And when you have a true alpha female on in your life, then you just really found God's favor. Period. Because that person is going to add to you. That person is going to support you. That person is going to have discipline, which means that they're going to have loyalty, which also means that they're going to be someone that you can trust, somebody that you can rest your hat on, somebody that you like, well, baby, if I tear my ACL at work, I know that you work just as hard as I do. Our life's not going to get cut off. You're going to be able to still manage the household if I'm unable to do X, Y, and Z. A true partner, who wants to go in partnership with somebody that needs to be um, be managed? Like be, you know, be treated as, a, as an employee. You know, partners, when people say, I want to partner with you, they want to partner with you because they see something in you as a strength that they know either they need to make them greater or that they know having it makes it greater. Right. So I'm a, I'm definitely a true alpha female. However, I'm also a woman that desires to submit to a man that I trust. I want to submit. I think submission is sensual in its greatest form, but I'm not going to give a king spot to a peasant. It's not going to do it to somebody who's trying to be, you know, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, God put too much in me for me to give you pieces of me. You know, but when Betty Rice said about that, that piece of a man is better than having no man, that was not the truth. Like, why would we settle for, for a piece or a fragment when God says he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can actually think? So to me, it's almost like a disservice when we say we're just going to settle for that. Like, no, I can't settle. I can't settle. Some people you just can't settle with. And certain things, your purpose should not be something that you're settling with. And so me being strong does not equate to you have to be weak. I want a strong alpha male. I do. I, I just feel like that manages me best, uh, manages my personality best, because I'm also a woman that carries a lot. I have a heavy mantle with what I carry. And so I desire to allow to be with somebody that I know that when I lay my mental down, they can hold it. If I got three bags, he not talking about, baby, can we get somebody to get your bags? He can carry it. He can, he can carry my rope, my two rolling suitcases and my book sack. And I'm going to carry my purse. I need to know that you can do that because just as a man once a man, the reason men want a strong woman is because they want to be able to come home to someone that they can lay their head in lay put that lay your head what al green said lay your head on my pillow he won't a, a man wants something soft too alpha men they want something soft too they want to have someone that they can have mind-blowing conversation with and not just sex <laughs> you know they want to have somebody that they can bounce ideas off of and you have you have a a um a good decision or a good uh, idea about something that comes with information and knowledge, not just, oh yeah, baby, that sounds good. Like, no, like, tell me, what do you think? Tell me, what did you see? Tell me, what did you observe? And a man that is strong is not afraid of a woman that is strong because he understands that she is, she is not only his equal, but she is also his favor, not his favorite. But the issue is that we found in our communities and in our relationships is that there are men that desire an alpha female because they want the strength of her, but they don't want the management of her. 
Because anything that is worth having is going to cost you something. To whom the word of God says, to whom much is given, much is required. So God is not going to give you all his strength and you just think you ain't got to do no work with it. He say faith without works is dead. So clearly he, he positioned you to do some work. And so what we will find is that sometimes when we're dealing with broken people or people that have not come into the evolution of who God has called them to be, that they make us feel that there is an issue with being strong because they don't have the, they don't get to manipulate you into remaining weak so you can be tamed to do what they want. You are not here for the glory of people. You are here for the glory of God. So if So we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have a power battle about who's the head. I I don't, I'm not arguing with you about the head of, the head of our life is God. The head of our life is God. I submit to you because you're submitting to him. It's a domino effect. It's like boom, 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 right? So I don't want to be distracted by the, uh, by the attraction, if the attraction is our marriage, I don't want to be, I don't want us to be distracted by who made the last decision to pay the credit card bill this month. Like that's stupid. Like if, because if we have a, one of the biggest issues that relationships struggle with is that there's no value statement for it. There's no mission statement for the relationship. Every business owner or entrepreneur Or if you just look at a business period, everybody has a mission statement. Why do you think it's important to have a mission statement in your relationship? Because the mission statement in your relationship tells us who we, who we default to when things get rough. What is the statement for our family that we default to when things get rough? That's what the mission statement, the mission statement reminds you, why did I get married? When Tyler Perry said, why did I get married? Like that was real. That was a real question. Why did you get married? Because him asking, why did I get married is equivalent to what is the mission statement for your family? And if we don't, because if, if we're not bought into the mission statement for our family, then that is exactly why we're power struggling and we're power outages and we're not a power couple because we don't know what the mission statement for our family is. And, you know, it's so funny. I was, um, you know, when you have eagles conversation, it's really amazing because you get to talk to people that have um, different and sometimes similar mindsets, but they have different analogies to explain it. And I was talking to Sherelle this week and she shared with me, she said, Lauren, I, we were talking about intimacy and she said, people that have issues with uh, issues in their relationship, she said, it's a direct correlation with their issue with God their godly relationship, their intimate relationship with God. So it's not about you cheated, I cheated, or he ain't trying to pay bills, she ain't trying to pay bills. All of those things are distractions. What does the relationship with God look look like for that person? A person that, a relationship that has all of these issues are people who are afraid to get married because they think the sex is going to get boring, which is not the, not the case. Now when you got intimacy in your relationship, it ain't. Um, but, you know, people that have been married a long time and they're like, oh, the sex is not the same. What's your relationship with God look like? Is it the same? Because if it hasn't evolved and you're not, you're not pruning that thing and you're not growing that that intimate relationship with him then it speaks to why there is a disconnect in your relationship at home god is the head of this thing like the song god is the joy and the strength of my life he moves all pain like he is he moves all pain misery and strife like he orchestrates it all so when we start to remove when we start to get out of order and want to put ourselves above God and lord over people then that is when you have an issue in the relationship because you're out of order who who can use a broken toilet when you out of order you just out of order so Having God as the head of that thing, it it kills all of the it kills a lot of that distraction stuff. Like, you know, you don't support me. Well, what's the mission statement of our family? If if 
For example, my purpose is to help others find theirs and also maximize theirs. I'm a midwife. So that means I can't be with a man who ain't got midwife potential. Like who not midwife purpose driven. I want to impact the nation and have thought provoking conversations that will make people say this going to ruffle feathers. If we're not having those types of conversations, if he's not that type of person and he's okay with just hiding in the whim and sitting at the house drinking beer, we're not going to make it. You're going to absolutely have a problem with my personality. You're, everything I do going to get on your nerves because you're not assigned to my purpose and I'm not assigned to yours. It's really just that simple because when you, when you, um, merge with somebody that is assigned to your purpose, you don't, you don't collide as a crash. You merge and be almost become one in that thing. It, 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 it also, it almost turns into a point where you can't see where they ended and where you began because y'all are one because the purpose and the mission for the family is the same. But we, in our families, we don't talk like that. We don't talk about what's the mission statement for our family because whatever that is, is what it was designed to be. And so when things get rough, we got to go back to what were we designed for? Because that brings, that brings the, the focus back in because life is going to happen. Situations are going to come up. You're going to have a better idea than me and we may go with that. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you this. As an alpha female and a woman that has her own business and runs her own thing, when I come home, my desire when God gives me my purpose, mate, is to come home to somebody that I can just trust and know, like, you know what? He got this. Like, baby, what you said? What we moving to? We moving tomorrow? Okay. You pray? Okay. Well, let me go pack. I'm not asking no questions. You know why? Because I know he heard from God. I know that when he says, I heard God say X, Y, Z. I'm going with it. It's when you come home and you just say we moving and I'm like, oh, for real? You heard from God and you like, well, no, I just, just this salary is going, is better for us. No, because I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by purpose because I'm also understanding the power of order and time. If we move because it's better money over here, but what if God wasn't done with our assignment where we are now? So now we've gotten out of order. Somebody's life is not going to evolve the way it should. Or we're going to miss a big opportunity that really was going to set our family up for life because we made a permanent decision in a temporary season. See, that's why I need to know that you, that you and God hollering at each other. We, you talking. Men, kings, most attractive thing to a alpha female is a man that prays. If you want to get my attention, pray, just bless the table. I'm going to fall out. Like, let, you praying? You blessing this table, sir? You better, can you bless the table? That, that for us is sensual and sexy and just makes us want to just act as Ruth, darling, at Boaz's feet, just sitting there. I just want to listen to you all day. I want to hear your wisdom. That's what gets us flowing, not what the world says, you know, not that stuff. That's what gets us flowing. That's what you want to know what gets the juices flowing is when a man is submitting to God in front of us and ain't afraid to do it. That right there. So you all, you all day attractive to me all day and twice on Sundays. All day. I'm trying to cook. I'm trying to be like anime, anime peers, but I'm trying to cook, clean, wash everything. I'm trying to go above and beyond because I know that the man that I'm in partner with, I know just as I'm listening and receiving from God, so is he. And God's going to make sure that we're on the same path. And even when there's times that I don't understand why he's making a certain decision, I'm going to go with it because I know that he, he, Baby, that man called by God. If that man said we gotta, we gotta wear tutus and heart socks in the winter, baby, we gonna have to wear that. We are gonna have to wear it. That's how much I want to be able to trust you. Hey, Munson, that's how much I want to be able to trust you. And Kings, a strong woman is not there to argue your mantle in God. She's not there to try and, um, stifle who you are she's not there to try to tell you tear you down if if the woman in your life is tearing you down that ain't no godly woman that's a broken woman hiding behind the title saying she's alpha female when she's really 
a little girl who's still mad at probably daddy and them and that last man she had and them men that she had. She's not healed because an alpha female will speak to the king in you all day and twice on Sundays, especially if you're praying. We want to speak to the king. We want to activate your purpose, baby. You know, we, that's who we want to, that's who we want to activate. We want to see, we, because one thing about a, a alpha female, the thing that makes us admire our Kings is his ability to rise. You want to, you want to see us just be out here glowing. Just let, just let that man rise. Just rise to the occasion. Just take the lead. Just say, baby, I got plans for us. And this is what I did. And this is what we're going to do. And this is where the children are going to go. And I've already got this done. And I've already got this handled. Let us just sit with that. That's the desire for us. And so for queens, it is our job and our duty to cover our homes, to pray for our kings, to cover them that God will show them of the pathway for they are the leaders of our home it is not for us to be sitting up here tearing them down telling him he never gonna be anything why he not doing this why he not no no ma'am can you be a pillow ain't nobody trying to lay up next to no boa constrictor at night they done fought all day in the streets they ain't trying to come lay up next to you smacking your lips that's not sexy that ain't no alpha female I have a female going to say, darling, I just want to hear your heart. Tell me about your day and really mean it. Tell me, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about this? Well, okay. Tell me more about that. I'm intrigued. I'm into me. See, not just trying to sleep with you. I want to know the way your mind works. I want to understand why it works that way. Because I want to be bought into the vision. I want to buy into the mission statement for our family and for our home. So, no, I'm not trying to just get no wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and go on. No, I want to be, I want to know. I want to know what Joe said. Joe said, I want to know. Joe said, I want to know what turns you on so I can be the one, you know, that, that don't, that don't do you wrong. Right? He want to know what the last man did. You know, sometimes we listen to the secular music and we so spiritually holy, like y'all just be too holy. Sometimes words are powerful no matter in what regards you put them in. They have meaning and they have purpose. You just have to be listening for them. A person that wants to know where you've been so they know not to take you back there, that's a person that's into me see. I think for me, the most disrespectful thing that a man can do is have the ability to research and find who you are and decide not to do it at all. Because a purpose king that is looking to be in your life, queens, are looking to invest in you. His conversation is not to take advantage of you, but how can I help you? How may I assist you? Because just as God served his, just as Jesus served his people, so does our king. Kings are people that can serve. Jesus served. Jesus was washing feet and performing miracles. Who are we? Christ-like? Oh, so we can't serve? Serving is sexy. Because when you serve, I'm trying to serve harder. I don't want the argument to be who made the last decision. I want the argument to be who who's serving harder, you or me. If you ever play tennis with me, my serve game is everything. Who's serving harder? I want to be serving just as hard as you. I want to, I want to play the game of can I outlove you? I want to wake up with the idea of what can I do to make your day easier today? Not... Yeah, I know you ain't going to go get the kids, but I really wish you could because today I got a long day. Women, can we stop doing that? That's not an alpha female. That's not an alpha female. That's the woman who tired of you taking advantage of. An alpha female is just going to say, baby, I, what does your schedule look like today? You know, can we try to coordinate uh, the children because I've got X, Y, Z going on. And I would it would really help me if you would be able to do that for me. And then in, I can do this. I can meet you here with them. I can pick them up. And we strategize, right? Why do we strategize? Because we want to make it cohesive for everybody. We want to make it cohesive. That's what true partnership is. Who wants to get in partnership with somebody that only want to fuss all day? I don't want to be in partnership with that. That ain't no alpha female. That ain't no alpha male. That's just, that's a mad person talking about they strong. No, you're not strong. You're a bully. Let's call it what it is. Let's stop, let's stop hiding behind titles and words and pretending that's not what they are. Because a true king can submit because he submits to God. 
And if he is, a, if he is a servant, if we are God's servant and here to serve his people, then why are we not serving at home? Kings and Queens, your children should see you serving each other. So that way they know how to serve when you're gone. Or how to serve in their relationships. Don't you think that if they had a servant personality, we wouldn't have bullying in school as much as we do? They bullying in school because you bullying at home. They see you going off, rolling your eyes, cussing, yelling, acting a fool. And they go to school and they do the exact same thing and they magnify it. Because you're not managing, you're taming. There's a difference. You're taking something from the wild and trying to make it make it be civilized when it was never designed to be. That's why people that put others in, others in boxes never really understand that their box had a gift in it because they were too busy trying to tame it. Alpha female can't be, alpha male or female period can't be tamed. Those are people that can't be they can't be tamed. It drives them crazy. Because the truth is, at that point, you're being selfish. And all you want us to do is the tricks that you taught us. You don't want to know me. You want to know the tricks you taught me. You, I'm not here for your glory. I'm here for God's glory. My life was designed to bring God glory. Okay? So when my purpose aligns up with his will, there's a combustion, a, a combustion that's called blessings and miracles. That combust when we come together. It has to all be properly aligned and in order. So, you know, I wanted us to have this conversation about the alpha female because I am a huge advocate of the alpha female. And I'm a huge advocate of one because I know that our kings need a strong queen to hold, to hold down the fort. While he's out taking care, I should be able to, he should be able to walk away and know that I'm at home taking care. And when he gets back, it's already taken care of. There's nothing wrong with us both being strong. Who trying to, who out here hunting for the weak person other than maybe a narcissist? They're the only people that's hunting for a weak person. And to be honest with you, narcissists are not hunting for weak people either. They're hunting for people that are strong, that they can challenge to become weak. Because it's a challenge for them to break you down. They like that. That's what they're looking for. They're not, they're not, even a narcissist is not looking for a weak person. They're just looking for someone they can break down to their weakness. But they're not looking for a weak person like the enemy. The devil ain't looking for a weak person. When he, when he was spotting Job, he told God, I'm just out here looking to see how I may divide. No, you ain't going to take that hedge around Job. Job, your chosen person. He wasn't out there looking for Job's cousin who was doing nothing with his life. When the last time you saw somebody homeless getting robbed? We Everybody got the news app. When's the last time we didn't had an influx of homeless robberies from people who got careers and jobs and families? No, the homeless is trying to rob you because you have something that they want. You have you have a resource. You have a, you have something that they are desiring. So the enemy is not after people that he already has. He's after people that that has production that's productive. So please understand that there is nothing wrong with being strong. That is not an issue. That is not a problem. And the only people that have a problem with you being strong and having boundaries are the people that are no longer able to use you for their glory and benefit. Everybody else don't mind. Most people in my life, they don't mind that I'm strong. I'm strong, but I'm not condescending. I'm strong, but I'm also not going to diminish your character because of my strength. If anything, I'm going to demand that you rise up because I want to see that king in you rise up. I'm not going to ask you to dummy yourself down to be with me. I don't want that. That's not attractive to me. A yes man or a yes woman is not attractive to me. I want to know what's going on in your mind and in your brain and in your heart because God made us all all equal. He made us all with something, something unique about us. There's a unique identifier about us. And I want to know what identifies you to be unique. I don't want to hear the same thing somebody else said. So that's the, that is the true force and movement of a alpha female is our ability to not only support you and love you, 
but to push you to that place called destiny, not tear you down, not beat on you, not verbally abuse you, not physically abuse you, but to actually kiss those scars until they turn into beauty marks. Until when you see them, you look back at them and say, oh, that was beautiful. That is the power of someone that knows their own strength. So kings, don't be afraid of an alpha female. Yeah, we strong, but we strong because you're stronger. And we want to make sure that if you ever scrape your knee, fall face down, that you know that we got you. You may fall, but you won't die. You may fall, but you won't land hard because you got something to land on softly. A woman strong enough to love you even at your lowest. That is the power of an alpha female who has force and movement. I tell um, people all the time, people always say, you've got vision. And I always respond. And I also have execution. Meaning, I don't just see, I move. I don't just see, I act. I'm not a one-trick pony. You cannot put me in a box. I am multifaceted and I am a hybrid. I do all things and all things well. And I have balance. I have confidence. So I'm someone that you know you can trust. That you know is going to have your back. That you know is loyal. That is the true sign of an alpha female. Not a doormat. And a king shouldn't want you to be one, queens. If he's asking you to negotiate your value so he can begin to afford you, you just negotiated yourself at less. Know the compensation will be way, way less than what it should be. And Queens, you are worth more than what you settle for. So don't settle. So I'll leave you with my favorite quote that I posted this past week. A person that if you ever settle, you will never be settled. If you ever settle, you will never be settled. So make sure that you say no to what you're good at so you can say yes to what you're great at. And those are the words of my very, very amazing life coach, Dr. Christina Lee. So I pray that this has blessed you. I hope that you guys share my live, leave your comments about the alpha female. Will I do a live on alpha males? Absolutely, because I'm a woman that loves alpha male. <laughs> I live for a strong man. I live, I live to be childlike in the presence of a strong man. So, <laughs> so we will definitely make sure that as we continue to discuss intimacy and you getting to know me intimately, that we definitely, definitely bring on some of our strong kings in the kingdom that are doing some amazing, amazing things. So I love you guys. Download the app, The Purpose, and go and purchase Intimacy. Let's make this one another bestseller. So I love you, and I'll talk to you soon in two weeks. Bye.